and I haven't caught it, just so you know. Uh, so we've got um, two points, and we want to know the distance between those two points. So I can put a mark on my page to represent, I'm not actually making that mark, but there you go. There's one mark, and that represents um, Robin Hood's Bay. Okay. And then there's another mark down here on the grid, on the map that's in front of you, which is a boat. Okay. Oh, I could spell boat properly. And what we want to know is what is the distance between those two things, right? So that is what we're looking. We're looking at being able to calculate the distance between those two things. All right, what is that distance? And it's basically how you do the distance between any things. So we have on the, the book, you can see that there is a, a set of axes and we've got coordinates, all right? So I'll do those roughly. We're not going to, uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. What are the coordinates of Robin Hood's Bay? It even says on there. 2.5, 4.6. Two That's the coordinates of Robin Hood Bay. Um, the boat? Okay. So you can see by the way that I'm doing this that I've not bothered to put them. Actually, all I'm really interested in is, are these numbers. Right? So you can tell from that that we're not going to necessarily need the grid. We should be able to do this just with the numbers. All right. So we want to know that distance. Now, when I said to you we're using Pythagoras' theorem, what are we looking for? A right angle triangle. Now, obviously, you can already spot where the right angle triangle is, can't you? How do we get it? Jack? Uh, Robin Hood Bay, yeah. uh, vertically down. Okay. And then uh, use a boat and do it horizontally. Yeah, there you go. All right. So there's my right angle triangle. So now what do I need about that right angle triangle? So I want to know this distance, so I need to know the other two sides. Because Pythagoras' theorem only works if I know two sides and I want to know the third. So basically then, uh, we need to know this distance. So the way we would do that is, well, we know the coordinates of that point, and we also know the coordinates of this point. So what's the y coordinate? Of up here of RHB, Robin Hood's Bay. What is it? 4.6. Yeah. What is the y coordinate of this point here to give me that length? No. Sorry, no, you're right. 2.5. It is. It's this one. It is 2.5. What's the x coordinate of this point? No, nope. 2.5. And the x coordinate of this point is 7.7. So just so you can see, I'm going to color coordinate. 4.6 comes from there. Uh, 2.5. Is that right? Yeah. No, it's not. No. That 2.5 comes from this 2.5. Because these are the two y-coordinates. That's the y-coordinate here. This is the y-coordinate here. Now I'm going to call it, just so you know, 4.6, I'm going to call my y1. Because it's the y-coordinate of the first point. This point down here, I'm going to say 7 points, uh, sorry, 2.5, I'm going to call it y2. Step. That only helps you if you know to go along before you go up. Why is not the 4x? 
Oh, do you mean in the coordinate? Yeah, yeah. all right. X and Y. Um, the next coordinates, we are 2.5 here goes with this 2.5 and this 7.7 .7 is here and these two numbers are my x1 and x2 okay so I've got those numbers, so what's the actual maths of working out the lengths? So this distance here, this is the, let's call it the A distance. So my, because I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem, so this is C, this is A, and this distance is B. So I've got C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So how do I work out A? Um, what about even 4.6 minus 2.5? So 4.6 minus 2.5. And I'm going to square that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then B squared would be 7.7 .7 minus 2.5 squared. So... So let's just colour coordinate, coordinate that again. So the green, 7.7, .7, and this two, because we've got two of the same numbers, which makes it a bit trickier, but the 2.5 is that one. And then the other two numbers are my 4.6, and then I've got my 2.5 there, okay? And if I wanted to write that in a different way, I would do, well, I've got y1 minus y2 squared plus um, x2 minus x1 squared. Is that right? Now, of course... Well, you tell me, can these Y1s and Y2s be other way round? No. Well, no, 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 no. The A and B can be switched around. A and B could be the other way. I could choose. But also, just in this equation here, could I have Y1 minus Y2 and then X1 minus X2? Or does it always have to be 1 minus 2? Well, actually, it depends. So, uh, how did I choose which one was going to be y1 and x1? The higher number. Oh, if it's oh, number, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Not a plane. We're always on one plane. But, yeah, I chose this one here as my first coordinate. I'm going to choose. I chose this one as my first coordinate purely because I wanted to. That was the leftmost point. And then I went, that's my first point, this is my second point. But it would be different, wouldn't it, if, if my first point was down here and my second point was up here, I'd then be subtracting, things would be the other way around, wouldn't they? Yeah. Okay. But all we need to know mathematically is that we take the larger from the, the smaller to find the length. Do I need to worry about negative numbers? No. No, no. no. why not? Because you're taking the, uh, the smaller from Okay, no, well, no, because that, if I, well, we are, but do you remember I said computers and calculators are quite stupid? Yeah. yeah. So if I were to program this in, I couldn't make the computer decide which was the bigger and which was the smaller, all right? So is, does it matter though? So if, if the computer always took one number and subtracted another, would they get a negative? Not always, but would they? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it would get a negative. It depends on which way around it was. Would that matter in Pythagoras' theorem? Yes. Yes. Yes, because then the hypotenuse would end up being sometimes smaller. No. 
What would happen if I did 2.5 subtract 4.6 instead? Negative I'd get a negative number. Would that oh, matter? Squared. Because it's yeah, it's, squared. Because it's squared. It doesn't matter if it's a negative or a positive, does it? Yeah, but if it's positive, then it's positive. Exactly. So it actually doesn't matter, in this case with Pythagoras' theorem, whether I do the large takeaway the small or not. So actually, um, what we can do is we can write our formula in the way that they've got in the book. So I've done it like this because I took smallest take the largest. However... The formula, and hopefully you'll understand why, is that the distance squared is equal to, no, there's no A's and B's, it's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And they've not changed the order. All right? And the reason why they've not changed the order is because when I'm squaring, it doesn't matter if I end up with a positive or negative. So actually, all you have to do is make sure you subtract the two x's either way round, and oh. make sure you subtract the two y's Will either it be way a round. Different answer? No, it won't. Because if I square negative two or two, what do I get? You still get two y's. I mean, like no, I don't. Positive. If I square negative two or two, oh. I get oh. four. Oh. No, but like. What, what if what if it was just oh I see. So once I've squared these numbers, they become positive anyway, don't they? Yes. Okay. So I'm not going to come and help anyone that's having a giggle and a laugh instead of listening, by the way. Right, so that's the distance formula. Basically, you will be given coordinates of points instead of lengths of sides. It will be up to you to figure out the length of the side, and then that's it. We've generalized it by giving it a formula. It's not really necessary to have a formula. Okay? Not necessary, but we have one because we can generalize it. Um, so, any questions on that? No? So... Oh, no, so I would actually work out the answer so to this now. It's 4.41. Yeah. So should we do it? Let's finish this off then. So let's use this formula then for this. So I've got, so forget what I did before. So just read. So d squared equals, what are the two x coordinates either way around? 7.7. Minus 2.5 squared. Uh, the two y coordinates are? 2.5 and 4.6. Going to do that one that way round. What is 7.7 .7 minus 2.5? So that's 5.2 squared plus 2.5 minus 4.6 is negative 2.1 squared. Happy with that so far? Now over to our calculators. What's 5.2 squared? 27.04. Plus what's negative 2.1 squared? Pardon? 4 point. Oh, yeah, I did it. No, because So it's 31. So there's no negative, is there? Exactly. Oh, so it's still 31.45. Yes, yeah, 30. Yeah. 30. All right. So now d squared is... Point four five. It is. Yeah. It does say in the book. <laughs> so therefore, d is the square root of thirty one point four five. So d is five point six one. Five point six one. Wait, hold on. Let me play that again. Well, um, so could we? When? So can we just round that? I think that's probably already rounded, isn't it? Yeah, it is definitely rounded. We don't know because they're working, but we'd actually have to do it oh, ourselves. I, I did the one. I just pressed the wrong button. You did it, and it, it was rounded, yeah? Yeah. But, um, so just, in a test, would we round on. it to that uh, significant? Not significant. It, well, if in a test, it depends. If it's a criterion A assessment, and I say, just give me the answer, I, will, I should add and round it to. 
If I don't give you an accuracy to round it to, it means I don't care, right? Criterion A. So you could round it. What I would always do before you round it, let's say you've decided to round it to the whole number and you, you want to put the answer six. Always put it to a couple more, just like higher accuracy to show that your rounding is correct. Because if you did that and wrote equals six, I, can, I don't know whether they actually knew how to do the square root properly. Right? Um, so always put the number before. Now, I'm not saying if there's 15 decimal places on your calculator that you must write them all, but you could write three or four and then round it to what you feel. If, however, I've asked you to round it to two significant figures, you don't need to write the unrounded first. You, as long as your two significant figures is correct, you're all right. However, if you do write the unrounded number, and then you round it, there's an extra hope for you. Because if your unrounded number rounds correctly to what you said, even if it's not the answer that I'm looking for, you still get credit. So maybe your mistake was not with the rounding. Whereas if you don't show me, you might end up with an incorrect rounded number and an incorrect number full stop. Okay? So I would always give a if you're going to round, give a slightly more accurate answer first, all right? However, in a criterion D, I think it's D, it says you must be able to justify the degree of accuracy that you're using. Therefore, I will just say round your number to an appropriate degree of accuracy and you will need to choose it and justify it. Yes, then. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely fine. However, would I leave the square root of 31.45 in the third form? No. <laughs> well, actually, I could do, because that isn't rounded. Oh, yeah, and it's an it's a, what you call it? Irrational, irrational number. number yeah. It's, it's going to be an irrational number. Um, I could leave it like that. It's, it still looks a bit messy, to be honest. Normally, we would leave it in third form if it's a whole number. But in this case, it's not. If I have to round here at all, and this number is rounded anyway, then no, don't leave it in third form. If this number has not been rounded in any way, you could leave it in third form. Okay? But yeah, that's the difference. Criterion A and criterion D. Criterion D, you may well just be expected to round it appropriately yourself and give evidence as to why. That's part of the, the higher scores so and the criterion D. Why would you well, what would I give a distance to? What? Oh, oh, so like if it was in feet or meters, you would do like 5.6. Yeah, so look at this problem. What's the distance between Robin Hood's Bay and the boat? 5.61 It's nautical miles. So I've got 0 0.61 of a nautical mile, which would be down to what sort of measurement, roughly? So do you know miles go down to, no, it's not meters, meters is, no, they're metric. Is that imperial? I mean, yeah, miles is imperial, so it goes down to. Yeah, so it'd be yards, feet, inches, eighths of an inch, no, not centimeters, centimeters. So nautical miles, I basically said here that I'm in yards and feet. And is that appropriate for the distance a boat has to travel? Oh, yeah. yeah, if you're trying to be rescued. However, if I were to go down to inches, well, a boat can move certain inches just with one weight. So it's not really appropriate okay, to go to that level of accuracy. Should I cut it to just miles? Why not? Because if I get rid of the 0.6, I'm getting rid of half a mile which is quite a significant chunk of distance, right? So you've got to think, what measurement am I... We could get rid of the one, probably, yeah. I'd be happy enough if you decided to get rid of the, the one and add six, basically five and a half miles, nautical miles. That would work, wouldn't it? If you came within a few feet of someone floating in the water, you'd no. hopefully be able to see them. Although not always, if there's lots of ways. And if you're blind. 
<laughs> and on that note.